this is the framing I wanted. That nice spot between the roof of the house and the trees. Gotta love it. Hi everyone, this is Trevor from astrobackyard.com. I shoot deep sky astrophotography images here in my city backyard. Tonight, the big telescope and mount will stay here in the garage and instead I'll be using the popular Ioptron Sky Tracker Pro camera mount for some wide angle shots using my Canon T3i DSLR and a wide angle camera lens. Fans of this channel may remember that I reviewed the Sky Guider Pro back in July. The Sky Tracker Pro is that mount's younger brother. It's a single axis equatorial mount suitable for long exposure astrophotography. This Ioptron Sky Tracker Pro mount was sent to me from Ontario Telescope and Accessories for review. I was not paid to endorse this product. The Sky Tracker Pro is crazy portable. I recently brought this mount on a camping trip, uh, a canoe trip actually. I'm gonna do some pointing, so be ready to point out there. Okay. All right. Uh, we actually had to canoe into this spot. My buddy's cutting down some wood over there where packing light was a must. Uh, this little mount easily fit in my single duffel bag mixed in with a bunch of clothes. Before using the Ioptron Sky Tracker for a night of astrophotography, make sure that the battery is fully charged. It uses the same USB charging cable as my Android phone, so it's really convenient. When the Sky Tracker is fully charged, the red light will blink when it's still plugged in. Now that I know that it's fully charged, we can switch it on and confirm that we've got it set to Northern Hemisphere and one-time celestial uh, tracking. There's three other tracking rates on this mount, and that's half-speed, lunar, and solar tracking. Equally as light and portable as the Sky Tracker is this carbon fiber tripod I found on Amazon. It's nothing special, but it's more than enough for the Sky Tracker, and it collapses up nice and small. The first thing we'll have to do to get up and running is polar align the mount, which is easy thanks to the built-in polar scope. Getting the Ioptron Sky Tracker Pro polar aligned is uh, an easy task uh, when you just pull up an app such as Polar Finder for Android uh, and you confirm the position of Polaris within the celestial sphere for that night based on your location and you simply match it up through the illuminated reticle on the Sky Tracker. The whole process takes about five minutes, uh, and that's probably my favorite thing about the Sky Tracker. Uh, last night, I woke up at about 4 a.m. just on a whim and looked out the window, and sure enough, it was clear. Ended up staying up, and uh, within five minutes, I had the uh, Sky Tracker Pro and uh, the wide angle lens combo up and running, and uh, I got a pretty uh, nice image of the Orion constellation. Sometimes you don't have the motivation to, to go out and get the big rig all set up and get all plugged in and auto guiding. So um, I love the spontaneity of the, uh, the Sky Tracker Pro. So I've got the unit switched on. We're slowly tracking the sky, and now it's just a matter of uh, framing up my target, which happens to be the area of uh, Cassiopeia and uh, Perseus. I've got the optional Sky Tracker branded ball head on here. 
Uh, you don't need to get this one. You can use your own if you've already got one. I set the mount up in a position back here where I've got a clear view of Polaris, the North Star, and uh, I've also got a nice window of sky for the area I want to shoot tonight. One of the other things I'll have to deal with tonight, uh, because it's so cold, it's about 4 degrees, is uh, the lens fogging up. So I've also got a little dew heater strap around the camera lens to prevent it from fogging up later on tonight. If you're shooting with a DSLR and a wide angle lens like this, use the camera's 10 times live view to focus your stars. Um, you can also frame up your target using live view. Uh, you're just gonna wanna make sure you've got the, the best settings for that. So for the T3i that and this lens, uh, you want the widest aperture, which is f4. Uh, the ISO is going to be cranked to 6400, and it's going to be on bulb mode, the longest possible exposure. That way, the brightest stars in the sky will definitely show up, and then you can do a five times and then ten times live view to uh, adjust the focus ring until you get that bang on. If you don't see any stars in the live view, shoot a test exposure where you think you're close and take multiple if you have to, you'll eventually work your way down to a sharp focus. Let's see how far off this bugger is. The problem is it's cloudy still right now. It actually isn't supposed to clear for another hour. So there you go. I wasn't too far off. So uh, what I failed to mention was that in this camera, as always, I have a light pollution filter, and tonight that happens to be the IDIS LPS P2 uh, clip-in filter. Uh, it does a good job of preserving natural star colors while reducing the city glow. And yeah, there's a lot of, lot of clouds still in the sky. So we'll have to wait on that. But uh, we are in very sharp focus. You can see those stars are tiny. This is the framing I wanted. That nice spot between the roof of the house and the trees. Gotta love it. Rudy, what are you doing out here? The detachable Alt-As base is uh, very convenient, very small. Um, it threads via a uh, 3 8 or 1 quarter adapter, so right onto the top of a uh, standard tripod mount. Yeah, just the overall size of it, it's so tiny. Like, considering how big a regular equatorial mount is. Look at this thing. Like, take the camera off. This is your mount. Let's talk a little bit about the features of the SkyTracker Pro. Uh, first off, the payload capacity is just over six pounds. So that is more than enough for uh, a DSLR and lens like this, or even um, a bigger lens. If you wanted to go heavier than that, there's an optional counterweight. Um, and then that opens the door to, say, a small telescope like the William Optics uh, Z61. It's very easy to uh, polar align the mount. It's got the uh, very smooth uh, alti altitude uh, adjustment uh, bolt here. Uh, you can lock it into place. And um, yeah, one of the features I haven't even used, but it is handy, I did it with the Sky Guider Pro, is the, uh, it's got this 180 times uh, slew speed. A little button here. I don't know if you can hear that, but see the camera turning ever so slightly, so that's for um, framing up your target, it's just another aid. Uh, the reason I don't use it is because with the ball head here, I'm just, I'm free to, to, to point wherever I want. Um, but if I was making uh, subtle adjustments and I wanted to keep everything locked in, you could use that little, uh, that little slew to just line things up a little better actually kind of handy to have. Okay, so there's got to be some negatives to this mount, right? Well, the one thing is, it's because it's so lightweight, you definitely don't want to be anywhere near it when you're taking your shots. The slightest little nudge, and you'll definitely knock out your polar alignment. I mean, a lot of that has to do with the, the, tr the lightweight tripod as well. Like, if you kick a tripod leg, the thing, the whole thing will go over, or uh, you'll it, at a at a minimum you'll uh, lose your polar alignment, just like that. So it's very delicate. You want to gingerly move things around. 
you want to double check your polar alignment after uh, going anywhere near it or touching anything. So it's a bit finicky that way. So I just cannot believe that we're at 10,000 subscribers uh, to the YouTube channel. So I want to thank you all for that. I've got so many exciting things on the horizon for Astro Backyard. I'm so glad you're coming along with me and uh, the best is yet to come.